And I'm so glad that you were here this morning, thankful for those that were joining online with the weather being iffy and we've had lots of people that called over the last day or two being sick, uh, but we know that God is going to heal you and make you stronger and uh, bring you back into the house. Amen. We trust for these things and we know God is more than enough to heal his people. So a couple of quick announcements before we go to prayer and trust God for these things. Don't forget that tonight at five, we will be having service online and we are continuing the uh, the end of chapter uh, one of Second Timothy and I'll be bringing the word there and I encourage you to be a part of that. There was a, a few verses that it's not very many, maybe I think it's eight through 18, uh, maybe 10 verses, but God sure said a lot, I felt like in 10 verses through the writing of Paul. So uh, I encourage you to be a part of that and, and get glean from the word if you're able to be and then don't forget tomorrow night at six o'clock online uh, our plan is to have prayer online if it's really bad weather uh, and it's really bad like reception well we'll put a post up and let you know but that would be the only reason why we wouldn't okay so we plan on having prayer uh, online tomorrow at six and then Tuesday at 6 30 sister Marsha I believe is bringing the word and then uh, Wednesday at 6 30 we have Bible study with pastor we look forward to all of these times together in the word and they will encourage you and give you food for the rest of your week and I'm not talking about we know we're talking about the spiritual food not the physical but we need the spiritual food of the Lord amen to encourage us and to keep us moving sometimes it's like I've said before it's not that we don't know the word but we need to be reminded sometimes of the word and it helps us to grow so in any of these opportunities I encourage you to be a part Saturday January the 27th at 10 a.m. is the last Saturday of the month they're having a work day here at the church um, some men are coming to do some work but I encourage anybody men or women that want to come be a part we need to do some organizing in a couple of the rooms and some clean out and so the more the merrier the more hands that can join the better it'll be so that'll be Saturday the end of uh, the month the 27th the last Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. we're gonna let you sleep in a little bit come at 10 and then we'll all just kind of go through more hands uh, what's that saying about many hands made light work. There we go. So some of our men will be working on specific things, but then the rest of us who can come will be in these uh, couple of rooms, storage rooms, kind of going through some things and kind of putting things up. We've got some new shelving. We're going to just be, be organizing basically. It shouldn't be anything too taxing, but more hands the merrier. So uh, pencil us in for the last Saturday the 27th at 10 a.m. We can fellowship while we straighten the Lord's house. That'll be all right, wouldn't it? It'll be good. So don't forget if you're able to come please come and join in on that we always have fun we always gonna laugh and enjoy the, uh, the time together so we encourage you to be a part would you stand where you are as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer this morning uh, we we have several families and things that some needs some different things that we need to pray for um, and so before uh, we do that uh, well let's see let's do that first because so let's, let's talk about the prayer needs we have. We want to continue to pray for Israel and for the people there. Let's pray for Shun and her family. They've got a lot of sickness in their household right now. And um, God is able to heal. And all of them are pretty well sick. We want God to heal them. We want to pray, uh, continue to pray for Karen. And we pray for Sister Joanne as well. Uh, Sharon Honado has been having some issues with her uh, sciatica. But we're going to pray for her. And Holly's family. I don't know if you saw where I requested to prayer, uh, some of you did I know, on the home page, the private page, uh, the, the faith family, the FFCOG page, about Holly's brother Garrett, but he's in Louisiana, and he's in a really bad shape. He has a disease that is causing a lot of other problems in his body, and he's in ICU right now, and she's uh, going there to be with him. It's just sort of been up and down, and he's not, you know, he's, he's uh, not much different in age from her, and so uh, he needs a touch from the Lord, and he needs God to, to touch him. I don't know how he is uh, with God spiritually, but we pray for those things first. But he also needs a touch in his body uh, that God would strengthen and heal him. So let's keep Garrett in our prayers. And also, Sister Jeannie, you notice she's not here. We always miss her, John and Calvin, when they're not here. But there's some sickness that they're going through there as well. This whole stuff, I tell you, it's just been, it's been around and it's tried to hang on to some people. But we know God is able. Amen. God's able to heal and he's able to uh, bring us up and strengthen us 
and all of these things, God is faithful. And so I want us to uh, have prayer over these things and whatever you might have a need of. I know there's some needs that are uh, in the house that, that, that God knows all about. Amen. How many of you came with a need this morning or somebody on your heart or on your mind? God knows these things. He always knows where we are. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 is a real familiar piece of scripture. Um, but the Lord put this in my spirit. Now to him who is able. Now see the first thing is we got to believe he's able. That, that's scriptural. We got to know that God is able. To him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think. You see he doesn't just want to bless you so you can get by to your next few minutes. And he doesn't want to bless you so that you get by just to make it into tomorrow. But you see he's a God of exceeding and abundantly blessing. He wants to give to us as his children the blessing that he has for us and his blessings are exceeding our need. Amen. They are abundant above our need and he wants us to believe him for that today above all we ask or think. It's beyond what we can even imagine. That's how powerful he is according to the power that works in us. Here's the second key to that scripture. What power is working in you? What power are you working with this morning? The Holy Spirit lives in you then you've got the power of the Lord Jesus living in you and we have the promise of God. That's scriptural. To him be the glory in the church. The church is supposed to glorify him by Christ Jesus because of all that he does and to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So we are serving a God that can touch across generation. A God that touches across time. A God that touches beyond your ability. Beyond your situation. A God that is able to meet your need not just barely but abundantly and exceedingly. He can do that and it's all according to if you'll believe him. The power that is working in you has to connect in faith to what God can do. Amen. He's not going to force you. He's not going to pressure you. Oh, he might nudge you, but he wants you to reach out in faith and believe for what he has said. And that's what we must do when we go to the Lord in prayer. We must believe God for the needs to people that are at home sick. We must believe God's going to heal them and touch them right where they are. Not tomorrow, not next week, but we're going to believe that God's going to touch them now. We're going to believe that God's going to do it now. We're going to believe that God is going to go there and going to reach them where they are. And if you came with needs in here today, and I know some of you have been talking about uh, different needs and you've gone to doctors and this different things, or you're maybe waiting on a doctor's appointment, I'm telling you God's going to meet your need right where you are today. I believe that because he's exceedingly and abundantly above everything we can even ask or think for in prayer. That's who he is. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning for these needs. Let's ask God to touch these needs and these people. Let's ask God to have his way. And let's be open to him and to how his spirit would want to move on us. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning thanking you, God, for all the many things you've done and for all the many things you're going to do. God, we pray in faith this morning and we believe, God, that you are above every need we have or ever will have. God, we are believing that you are exceedingly, abundantly, Father, above what we can even ask for. And God, as we come, we come, Lord, not in our strength, but in the power of your name, Jesus. We come and we come believing that you can minister to every soul, every need, every household and situation. Father, we pray that you heal even now where people are today, God, that are sick. We ask, God, according to the Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit, Lord, we connect with your word in faith and ask for a healing over them. God, that you would strengthen them even now, God, and that you would minister to the needs of your people. Father, we pray you would have your way in this service. And Lord, we come, Father, in spirit and in truth to worship you today. Lord, we pray for your anointing on this message. God, we pray that you would apply it in our hearts. God, we ask that you would have your way. Let your spirit flow among us, Father, because we want to be obedient to you. God, we want to welcome and be welcoming to your spirit, Father. We don't want to do anything, Lord that would shut you out in any way but God have your way and in our thoughts, in our prayers, in the message, in the worship and God we give you the praise for all things in Jesus name and the church says amen amen, amen. just keep standing for one second before we go into the song is, is she Andrew can somebody grab her somebody get Marsha yeah 
So we have a birthday coming up tomorrow. We want to just quickly recognize before we go to um, worship. Amen. I try to do this when I know it's people's birthdays and when I know that they're near. We want to recognize you. It's a blessing. Life, God is showing me more and more. Time is a blessing. It's not supposed to be a curse upon mankind. Amen. But it's a blessing. And every birthday that comes around, we are thankful for what God has, has done and given. So let's sing happy birthday to Marsha W. Marsha Williams. Birthday is tomorrow. Amen. She's going to be, well, I don't know how old she's going to be, but I was, <laughs> for, how, 41? 51. Ooh, girl, all right. That's all right now. That's, that's a good age to be. <laughs> we were going to back it up there just a minute, but 51 is what she'll be. So let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. It's good when we fellowship and recognize things in the house of the Lord. Now, if I skipped you somewhere along the way, you forgive me. I missed you, but not intentionally. Amen. You just take one of those birthday wishes for you. Now, who's ready to worship the Lord? Who's, who's ready to worship the Lord? Amen. I'm ready to worship. I hope you are. We want to bless the name of Jesus. Oh, and before we go further, let's say this. Let me let me back up one more time. Well, I was about to forget. A sister Alicia has a birthday this Thursday. Amen. All these January babies. I'm so glad to be a part of the January babies. All right, one more time. You know how we do this. Happy birthday to you, Alicia. Happy birthday to you. appreciate what these ladies do in the house of God. They're willing servants. Amen. We thank God for that. When you see them today, just give them a great big old hug and bless them in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Now let's get ready to worship. Praise the Lord. Someday soon, you know, we get used to this old life and we think things will always be the way they are. But one day soon, we're going to see Jesus. Amen. How many of you are ready to see him? I'm ready to see him face to face. I'm ready. And I know we're going to see him soon. Hallelujah. Well, some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. And if all that you believe yonder in the skies and oh, shall rise then oh what glory hallelujah when we meet our blessed savior in the skies well seems like now i almost see all the same today rising for that jubilee that is just ahead well in the twinkling of an eye changed with him to be all the Saints to fly to that jubilee, and oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise, oh, what shouting, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies, and with, with all the heavenly hosts, we begin to see. Join that song with them, we shall be praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee, and oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise, and oh, what glory. Now I almost see 
all the saints dead rising for that jubilee that is just ahead well in the twinkling of an eye change with them to be all the living saints will fly to that jubilee and oh what singing Glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky, and oh, we're singing, oh, we're shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise, oh, what glory. Jesus, for your goodness. How many of you are thankful for the goodness of God? We thank you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your love. Though the seasons come quickly, you have always been enough. Darker, though the waiting seems long, you have always been faithful to remind me of your love, and you are good. In the morning, I'll say, You are good, and in the evening, I'll sing, You are good. You are good to me. He's good. Hallelujah. You have always been patient. You have always been kind. You're consistent through the ages. Oh, what a friend of mine. So I'll remind my soul to bless you, standing firm upon your truth, knowing you cannot be shaken. Because I've seen that you can do. Oh, and you.
been patient you have always been kind you're consistent through the ages oh what a friend of mine so i'll remind my soul to bless you standing firm upon your truth knowing you cannot be shaken because i've seen what you can do and you time say you Proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Raise your hand or clap for him this morning. Let's worship the Lord. You know, I love that part of the song where it says, In the morning, I'll sing, You are good, because we, none of us know what tomorrow brings. But you know what? I, I've already made up my mind. There's been a lot of days I didn't know what that particular next day might bring. But I'd already made my mind up that I was going to worship him anyway, because he's good. No matter where we are, no matter what we're going through. 
through, no matter what surprises that our governments or this world or our society might throw, he's still good, amen? He's still God. He's still in control. No matter if we wake up in the morning with things that are perfect or maybe we wake up and things are less than we desired, he's still good. When I go to bed tonight, I'm still going to proclaim, no matter what today holds, no matter how I feel in my body, he's still good. No matter what might be going on in your season, he's still good. Amen. Oh, you are. Sing it one more time. You are good. I'll sing you are good. And we made up our mind. And then the evening I'll sing you are good. You are good to me. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, the word says we're unfa- when we were unfaithful, you still were faithful. Lord, when everybody else, Lord, might forsake or be unfaithful, you're still faithful. Lord, we thank you this morning for your faithfulness toward us as your children. Lord, we know we didn't deserve what you do, but we're so grateful, God, that you are faithful to your word and your love, Lord, supersedes what we deserve. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Lord, we bless your name this morning. And we know no matter what we face in life, you're still good and you're still God. That never changes. Your goodness never changes. And Lord, your kingship and your authority never changes. No matter what we face, God, we know that you're in control. Hallelujah. So we can worship you, Lord, no matter the season we find ourselves in. We can worship you, Lord, in 2024. God, we can worship you in spirit and in truth. And we thank you this morning. We bless you, Jesus. We honor you, God.
This is how I fight my battle. Somebody needs to fight. This is how I fight my battle. Raise your hands. This is how I declare the victory. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. This is how. And we're 
standing here only because you made oh you move mountains come on you cause you cause walls to fall and with your power he performs miracles perform miracles and there is nothing nothing's impossible impossible and we're standing here only because you made a way how many of you made, made a way for today did he make a way for you ever come on let's sing it oh you made a worship him for it don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way oh i don't know how but you did it god made a way i don't know how but you did it you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way but you did it lord We're standing here and we're standing here only because you may we're standing here standing here only because you made a way how many of you have made a way for hallelujah praise you Jesus praise you Lord and Lord we trust you for the way in 24 we trust you for the future hallelujah if he made a way before he'll make a way again hallelujah don't know why but you did it Lord you made a way I don't know why but you did it you made a way don't know why but you did it you you did it you made a way and we are standing here only because you made and we're standing here only because you we're standing here because of him we're standing here only because you Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You make a way. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to be reminded. He made a way before. He'll make a way again. He will. He'll make a way again. Hallelujah. You may not see how. Oh, but he'll do it again. Yes, he will. He'll do it again. Hallelujah. You made a way, Jesus. We know you'll make another way. Lord, we trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Can you pick it up? It, there it goes. Oh. How many of you was able to tune in on our Sunday school lesson the other night? If you didn't, you missed out on it. It was on the parable of the sower and the seed. And then this morning, I'm going to continue with that theme. The seed, the soil, and the fruit. Now, uh, up here this morning, you see that we got some fruit. So in a minute, I'll kind of tie it to, to what I feel like the Lord has given me this week. But we ended up last week talking about uh, Malachi chapter 3. 
And we were talking about how God blesses us when we sow into his kingdom and his work, his house. Amen. And, uh, you know, I got to thinking about anything that you're successful at, you're going to sow into. Come on now. Yes. If you're successful on your job, I, how many of us in here be honest this morning? Let's be honest about How many of you work a job because you get a check at the end of the week? <laughs> Come on, how many hands we got in here right now? Raise your hand real high. All right, now, y'all let y'all's hands down. How many of you didn't work because you was looking for money? So, we work with anticipation. We sow into our job anticipating what? A paycheck, a harvest at the end of the week. Amen? And that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about a harvest this morning. But on your job, you're going to sow and invest into that job if you want to reap something back from that job. Anybody in here ever had a friendship that you sowed into the friendship, but they didn't sow back into it? Come on now, I, I've had a lot of those friendships. You want to find out who your friends are? There's a country song that says, You find out who your friends are. You know, we broke down on the side of the road. You want to find out who your friends are? Back a U-Haul up to the house and see how many people show up. When you start moving furniture, doing something heavy, not very many people are going to show up. Anybody in here ever been a better friend to somebody than they was to you? Come on now. Can I tell you something this morning? You will never be better to God than God is to you. Never. Amen. So you invest in your job. You invest in friendships. How many married folks we got in here? You know, every now and then what I do, I come home and I got my wife's favorite treat or favorite drink or, you know what I'm doing? I'm investing. And every now and then I'll come in and she'll have a big old pile of uh, fried potato patties or salmon patties. That hasn't happened lately, baby. But uh, every now and then, amen? And she's sowing back into the relationship. So the concept of sowing and reaping is a powerful concept, right? Now, before before church, I asked Brother Tony if he would pass out some seeds. Y'all see how small them seeds are? Everybody hold their seed up in here this morning. Now, these are mustard seeds. See? Mustard seeds. Look how little they are. Can you tell the difference in them? Can you tell the difference in the seeds? No, you can't. You know why? One of them's a mustard seed, but the other one is a purple top. It, it, it's turnip seeds. Now, think about it. They look identical. I mean, I, I, you, can, you can look at the pack, and I'm spilling a few everywhere, but, but, but you can look at the pack, and you can't tell the difference in those two seeds. But after you plant them, and that plant matures, and, they har and you go to get a harvest off of them, you're going to tell the difference, amen, in the mustard seed and in the turnip seed, okay? Now, when we, when we, when we sow into something... We want to, we want to reap back. You're a good catcher? No. You did pretty good right there. Here, Charlene. Bill, here, you can catch. Look back here. Ah, oh, look there. He got it. He got it there. But see, see, we, we, we want, when you sow into something, you invest in something, what do you want? You're looking for something back. Amen. So how many of you know that the Lord... He sowed into us. Here you go, Lawrence. Lawrence can catch back here. Ah, he didn't catch that one. Angel's going to get it far. <laughs> this floor is sloped. Ken's got it far. <laughs> but see, we, we, we sow with the anticipation uh, of getting something back. And do you know the concept of people doing that even in the kingdom of God is not a foreign concept. Y'all remember me talking about Jesus? Jesus says nobody will leave houses, or mother, or father, or sister, or brother, 
in this life that he won't receive it a hundredfold with tribulation in this life. How many know God can bless you in this life right here, right now? People say, oh, one day when we leave this world, God can bless I want the blessing right now. I want it now and I want it then too. Amen. Amen. But immediately Peter looks at him and he says, well, Lord, we left everything to follow you. So what are we going to get out of it? Have you ever met somebody that, I call them bean counters, they want to figure out exactly what she was going to get and exactly what they was going to get. And you know, when I was a little boy, I had a nanny that watched me. And I couldn't count yet. And she got a big bag of M&Ms from the store and boy, y'all can look at me and tell, I love M&Ms. And she says, we're going to be fair about it. We're going to divide this bag of M&Ms. And she said, one M&M for you. One M&M for me. Two M&M for you. One, two M&M for me. Three M&M for you. One, two, three M&M. And I was looking and I was scratching my head. I was that little boy had his finger up his nose. I'm trying to figure that out. Because her pile is getting bigger than my pile. Amen. So, now you know, some of you, how many of you know who got what kind of fruit right now that I just passed out? You, you can see some of them if they hold it up. But if, you, if they ain't holding it up, you don't know which one of them got apples and oranges just yet. But you know, in the house of the Lord, see, we, want, we sow into the house of the Lord because we want to harvest. We want God to do good things in our life. Look how good that looks. See, all these oranges, they all look the same, right? And, and, and it all looks good. Matter of fact, you know what? <laughs> Mm. That didn't even taste good. I think I'll have another slice. Oh, I better not eat that one. Do you know why? On the outside, it looks the same. But on the inside, they're not the same. One of them's rotted. You know what's wrong with our churches today? On the outside, a lot of people look the same. But on the inside, they're not all the same. You had Pharisees that followed Jesus around, not because they loved him, not because they believed he was the son of God, but they, they, they followed him around because they was jealous of him and they was trying to disprove him. And Jesus had something to say to them. He said, on the outside, you look good. You look fruitful. But on the inside, you're full of rot. You're full of stench and dead men's bones. Just like he sees, they look identical, but after you plant them and they grow and they mature and they bring forth fruit, the fruit's not going to be the same. Do you know in this world you got people that are reaping fruit to righteousness? And you've got people that are reaping fruit to eternal damnation. Do you know they can make themselves look good? They can disguise themselves. They can blend in. And especially in churches. Now Jesus spoke to them in parables. And it said without a parable he would not speak to them. And that's what we're going to be speaking on in a minute. The parable of the sower and the field. So just listen if you would for a minute at this sermon right here. Go ahead with it, brother. Now, if you on Facebook, there's a link that you can go to. We can't put this on Facebook, but you can go to the link and listen to this song and then come back with us. Go ahead, Brother Scott.
Everything that she believed in, she reaped a harvest for it. The second she draw the last breath. Amen. You know, uh, over Christmas and and through New Year, I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, you know. I, I want, I want you to refresh something in me, and, and I want you to speak to me this year so I can touch the people. I don't just want to go through a motion going to church. Do you know what I'm doing? I'm sowing something into you. I'm sowing my time. I, I'm sowing everything that I believe, and I want you to take hold to it. And, and do you know we've got people, I'm going to tell you something, fellowship in this church is a lot better than it used to be because some of y'all are taking hold of this thing. And, uh, uh, you know, me and Brenda, we sit down and talk about these things. Uh, there was a time that me and Bill right there butted heads. <laughs> But do you know, when Christmas time come, he come over and helped me unload a truckload of stuff over here getting ready for a Christmas play. I've seen people that wasn't very comfortable talking to each other that now they're very comfortable talking to each other. Matter of fact, they'll even pray for one another in this church. Come on now. I, I seen on Facebook this week to where Matt and Alicia went over and they had one of our widows that they visited and they cut leaves and mulched the yard. You know why they do that? Fellowship. They, they're sowing into people. They're loving on people. And uh, Alicia, she pours so much into our kids, and I don't even think she's got anybody that really uh, that helps her back there. But you know what? She's investing into our kids. Amen. So what you believe in and what you love, you invest in. Amen. 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 So uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is that you invest in, but I can tell you this. If you invest in your job, you're going to have job security. Come on. If you invest in the church, you're going to have a beautiful church. If you invest in your marriage, you're going to have a beautiful marriage. And if you invest in your relationship with God, just like Peg McCamey, when you die, guess what you're going to hear? Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in a few things, and I'm going to make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Can you imagine being with God for eternity? Because we invested and we believed in what God had done for us. Amen here on earth. So I, I want to go for just a minute and and, and you know I, I'm going to try to if you'll give me your attention I'll try not even to go as long this year as I, I've been going on some of the sermons but I want you to get the meat of what I'm saying. Amen. In Matthew chapter 13, let's go there. Matthew chapter 13, and, and I'm just going to read through and expound a little bit on it. And then we'll, Jesus at first, he told this parable, and then after he told the parable, then he comes back and he explains the parable. Anybody ever read something in the Bible and you really didn't understand it? The other night I'm talking with somebody and they said, I got somebody that I love and they're scared to death that they've blasphemed and they can't go to heaven. You ever known anybody that was scared of that before? And you know what I told them? I said, if they, you tell them that I can tell them for sure they have not blasphemed. Because if they had blasphemed, they wouldn't feel bad about it because the Holy Spirit would never convict them again. He don't convict people that he can't save. And if you're a blasphemer and you've blasphemed against the Holy Spirit, he's not going to convict you anymore. You won't ever worry about that. Amen? Right. So we need, we need to know the Word. The Word's going to help us. And the Lord, He's not trying to hide what He wants you to understand out of His Word. He wants you to be able to get it. That's the reason He gives it to us in simple stories. We start out with our kids when we're teaching them in kindergarten, and we make it as simple as we can. Amen? Do you know why they're trying to attack your kids now in pre-K and kindergarten? The younger they can get them and the more, because kids are like sponges, they soak stuff up. Right. Amen. Be careful where you're sending your kids to school. Who's teaching your kids? Right. Amen. When, you, when you're sitting under somebody that's teaching or preaching, be careful who you're sitting under that's teaching or preaching. Do you? I don't want to sit under everybody. Amen. So let's go to Word. That's what they need to be pushing this morning, the Word. The parable of the sower. And it says, on the same day Jesus went out of the house and he sat by the sea. What same day? The same day he taught in the temple. The same day that a man came in with a hand that was withered and drawn up. I seen a man with this the other day. And, and, and it says, Jesus, immediately he touched him and he healed it. All these miracles that were taking place. And on this same day, 
it said Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea and great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got in a boat and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore how many of you know Jesus would sit in a boat and teach how many of you know that, that he would sit in an elevated place on a big rock and he would preach down into a valley where other people would sit and, and, and that way his voice would travel. See, he was in different environments and he was preaching to all different types of people and everybody that came, the multitude that came, everybody didn't like him. See, you in a day to day that a lot of people think, well, preacher, we know somebody that don't like you. If you got a good pastor, I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what denomination you in, what church you in. If you got people that don't like him, that's because that man's preaching the word. Because they don't like what's going to step on their toes. Amen? The word of God's supposed to change you. It's sharp. It cuts. It pierces. It would hurt if I took a, you know, Sister Brenda's diabetic. And she told me one day, she says, Andrew always gives me my shots, but he ain't, he, he ain't here right now. Would you be willing to give me my shot? And I said, well, sure. And I just rubbed some alcohol on there. And, you know, I thought, we want to get it over with as quick as we can. That's the way I like mine. And, boy, I just, and stuck that thing in there. She said, oh, you'll never give me a shot again. <laughs> And to this day, I have begged, let me try, I'll be more gentle. No, you're not giving me no more shots. <laughs> well, do you know, just like that hurt her, the Word of God, when, when we hear it preached and we got sin in our life and the Word reveals, it pierces our heart, it hurts, amen? The Word of God burns. It's not going to make you comfortable. And any preacher that's keeping you comfortable, every time you go into church and sit under him, you need to run from him. Amen? Oh, that's good, Pastor. We'll, we'll take that right there. And it says, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Why did Jesus do this? He was so surrounded, he wanted everybody to be able to see him and hear him, so he had to get into a boat and push out from the shore. And it says, then he spoke many things to them in parables, short, simplistic stories. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Now, I've had some old redneck friends that changed the story up, and you couldn't tell that to little kids the way that they told the story. Amen? But parables, short, simple stories. And look what Jesus said. Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. Now, y'all know, how many of you around here have been out in the country? You've been around a lot of fields where they plant things. And do you know on the edge, they got a place where they'll drive around the field. They drive the tractors around the field. And, and, and that ground is as hard as a rock. Now, if seed, when they're sowing seed, if some of the seed fly that way and they land on that hard ground, it's as hard as this right here. And it's not, gonna, it's not going into the soil. It's not going to penetrate the soil. And it can't get the nutrients it needs. It's robbed of nutrients. And guess what? Other things happen to that seed, too. You got a lot of birds out there. Come on. And, but some of the seed is going to fall where there's rocks and things like that. Some of it's going to fall on that hard ground. Some of it's going to fall on good soil. Now, if you're going to get good fruit, you know what you're going to do? That comes from a seed that fell on good soil. Amen? But if you got fruit that's not looking too good, sometimes it came out of a, a, a ground where the seed germinated, but it was real rocky and it didn't have any nutrients in the ground. Maybe they had uh, planted there too many years or something. Y'all ever seen fields and they would rotate in one year they wouldn't plant that field? Why? Because that field had to be replenished. Next year you come back and plant it again. Amen? So let's go back to this parable here. It says... He spoke to him in parables, said this sower went out to seed, uh, sow seed, and some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places. You ever seen people come through life, and sometimes people say, well, everybody's the same. Everybody's not the same. You got some kids, their daddy got killed when they was three years old. They didn't grow up and they didn't graduate high school with a good dad that was taking care of them. They had a harder life than you did. Life circumstances are different on a lot of people. 
You got some ladies in here, maybe their husband divorced them when they was married four years. And guess what? They're working 12 and 14 hours a day, and if anything gets bought for the house, they buy it. If they eat, they cook it. And if any gas gets put in the car, they have to put it there. Sister Brenda, I don't even know if she knows where the gas nozzle goes. <laughs> Everybody's circumstance is not the same. Just because you blessed, that don't mean everybody else was blessed like that. Right. Amen? And look what it says here. It says, some fell on stony places where they didn't have much earth, and immediately they sprang up, but because they had no depth of earth, when the sun was up, they were scorched. Do you know trials, temptations, tribulations? The Bible tells you, in this world, you will have trouble. How many of you in here like Elvis Presley coming up? We got some older people in here. Elvis in here. If you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place. Hey, I've had trouble my whole life up till I got saved. You know who brought most of it on me? I did. I brought most of the trouble on myself. Amen. <laughs> it says when the sun was up, when trouble comes in life, when they were scorched because they had no root, they withered away. You ever seen people come to church, oh, they're all excited about it, and they might even want to get up and be on the praise team or help teach or do this, that, or other. In four weeks, you don't even know where they're at. You might not ever see them in your church again. Why? They got excited about the seed. The seed is the word, the gospel. But because they didn't have any root, the seed didn't take. They didn't stick around very long. Oh, some of you, you ain't amen. Some of my amen folks ain't here this morning. And it said, some fell among thorns. You know what thorns are in this life? I had a kid tell him, said, I can't wait till I get out of my mom and daddy's house. I'm so sick of listening to them, everything they do. I said, oh, you exactly right. I said, it's a wonderful thing to get out of the house. And they said, I can go to movies. I can go out to eat every day. I can do this and this and this. I said, yep. As soon as you pay the light bill, the water bill, the gas bill, the phone bill, the house insurance, the car insurance. And look, they were, I said, oh, and you ain't even thought about buying groceries yet. And I said, when you get through all that money you thought you was going to go out and party on, you got pocket lint left. <laughs> See, everything ain't like it looks like it is. Amen? You know what the cow thinks? Oh, the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence and it sticks their stupid neck through the bob wire and it cuts their neck all up. But the grass on the other side of the fence, it's the same grass you're chewing on this side of the fence. Amen? Amen? I had a pastor the other day call me from another state. He said, man, I'm so sick of these people. I think I'm going to leave this church and I'm going to do a new thing this year and I'm going to get me a new church. I said, hey, well, one problem. I said, all sounds good. <laughs> he said, well, it's a different town. It's different people. I said, yeah, but when you get in that church and you go to preaching in that church, there's a problem that's going to confront you. He said, what is? I said, you got people in that church just like you had in your last one. <laughs> Come on now. See, everybody's looking for the perfect church. But if you find one, don't go because you mess it up. Because ain't none of us perfect. Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. So some seeds fell among thorns. You know, when relationships start having trouble, when you start going through separation or divorce, when you got a car payment and you ain't got the money to pay it yet, and on top of it, you don't know how you're going to pay next week's bills and a kid gets sick and they go to the hospital and you end up, even after the insurance pays, you owe hundreds of dollars. You don't know where that's coming from. And guess what? You're so wrapped up in the cares of this life, that's the thorns. You ain't even, next thing you know, two weeks gone by, you ain't picked the Bible up, you ain't prayed. And even if somebody does mention, well, if you took it to the Lord in prayer, you get aggravated just because they said that. Why? You're aggravated because God let the situation happen to start with. The Bible said it rains on the just and the unjust. Y'all ever seen wicked people had plenty of money? Can I tell you something? This planet right here that we own, for sinners, this is the closest thing to heaven they're ever going to encounter. And if you're a child of God, this is the closest thing to hell you're ever going to go through. There's a difference made between the righteous and the unrighteous with God. Amen. And it says, some of them fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up, and they choked them out. But others fell on good ground. If you invested in somebody, and they don't get saved, don't give up. 
Me and Brenda and Andrew, we prayed for my mama and daddy to get saved year after year after year after year after year after year. The last 24 months of their life, both of them got saved. My dad got saved in the last few months. Don't give up. Amen. The answer's on the way. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord. So let's go back. Let's look at verse 10. It says, the perp well, I want to go back for a second. It says, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them out. Others fell on good ground, and it yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So God says, I'm speaking to you, and I'm putting it real simple so you can understand it. So you need to use the spirit of discernment. Anybody in here, you, you've had somebody you thought that they were really mature spiritually, but then you see them mess up and fall to some old trick of the devil, and you think, well, no discernment there. Come on now. If it's in God's Word, you can take it to the bank. I don't care who breaks it. I don't care if it's your kids. I don't care if it's your grandkids. I don't care who it is. If God's Word is against it, if they do it, they're sinning. Come on now. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He's not going to make a special set of rules for you and your family. He made one Bible, and we all got to go by it and live by it. Amen? And the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will help us to discern the things in life we should and should not be doing. Now, whatever you do or do not do, it's going to affect your harvest. Yes. Come on. Some people are, are blessed abundantly. People say, why do you think some people are blessed abundantly and others are not? God ain't going to give you anything unless he knows he can trust you with it. Right. Come on now. How many of you, be honest, if God gave you $50 million tomorrow, you're going to make an idiot out of you. Come on now. I've had friends in my whole life, i got friends, they were so hooked on bass fishing, they would hock their soul for a boat with glitter on it. <laughs> had to have that bass. Well, it's only $350. How long it the rest of my life? <laughs> because it looked good to them. Amen. Everything that glitters ain't gold. Oh, Lord, I hope y'all getting this this morning. <laughs> Verse 10 said, And the disciples came to him and said, They said, Why do you speak to them in parables? Just because you got a revelation of something don't mean they got a revelation of it. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, the scripture says, From the time of John the Baptist to now, the kingdom of God has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. You know what this talking about? There's going to be spiritual warfare from the time of John the Baptist till the day the kingdom of God suffers tribulation and persecution. But Jesus gave us a good word. Fear not the world, I have overcome the world. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Yeah. So when the world takes away, God's able to give. He's our healer. He's our provider. He's the God of pressed down, shaken together, running over. He's the God that opens up the windows of heaven and pours you out in abundance that you can't contain. Right. Amen. And he answered to the disciples and he said, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. So what does God do? He finds people that he was able to trust. They sowed the seed into his kingdom. They were blessed. And because they're blessed, now God will give them more because he knows he can trust them with it. Y'all on board with me? It says, so, so let's look at that again. It says, for whoever has, to him more will be given. And he will have an abundance. What does God want his people to live in? Abundance. Yeah. Overflow. Y'all ever met Christians? They thought, I got to be broke all the time. I can't have anything that's pretty or looks good. Hey, you can walk around doing that if you want to. If that gets you to heaven, that's fine. I want to ride in style when I get there. Yeah. Come on now. I ain't an idiot. I ain't worshiping whatever it is. But guess what? I sure am enjoying the blessings. God don't mind you enjoying the blessings as long as you recognize who gave them to you and where they came from. Amen. Right. Amen. It says, For whoever has, to him more will be given an abundance. But whoever does not have, even that that he does have will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. You know, I've preached something before. Somebody said, Will you sit down with me? I want, I want, to, I want you to counsel with me, Pastor. I said, Sure. I sat down with them. They said, Now, I don't understand this. I break the Bible out. I said, Here, do me a favor. See these words right here? These are written in red. Would you read this? to me and they read it to me and I said 
when something's written in red, it came out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. I said, are you getting what I'm telling you? Read it to me one more time. And they'd read it. They said, yeah, but I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I agree with that or if I believe. I said, what do you mean you don't agree with it? God said it. See, you in a society today, they say, well, whatever you relate to. Can I tell you something? When I was 18 years old, I related to a lot of people I shouldn't have related to. I thank God all the time I didn't marry them. Oh, man, it did get quiet in here, didn't it? You got some people married, folks. I don't know why God got me in this old rotten marriage anyhow. God didn't stick you in that. You wouldn't did that. You just happen to blame God. If something good happens to you, you take the credit for it. If something bad happens to you, you blame God for it. Woo! Amen, Pastor. Hallelujah! Oh, Lord. <laughs> Let's go back. He said, therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing they won't see and hearing they won't hear, nor will they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. See, I had somebody the other day said, well, I have somebody that's got me confused. They said, some people believe that we're going to go through none of the tribulation. Some believe we'll go through the first three and a half years. Some believe we'll go through the whole thing. I said, yeah, you call them pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I'm going to tell you something. I'm pre-trib all the way because the Lord said, unless I cut the time short, the very elect would be deceived. And I'm not going to be here because it says the Antichrist can't even come on stage and appear until he who has, who has uh, uh, contained him has been removed out of the way. You know who has, has withheld and withstood the power of the Antichrist? The Holy Spirit. Do you know where the Holy Spirit lives today? If you're a Pentecostal believer and you believe God, the Holy Spirit, it says He'll be with you, He'll be in you. So if the Holy Spirit left the earth and He's in me, guess what? I'm going to. Amen. I'm going to be raptured out of here. Then they can take the whole place over. They can have my house. They can have my new... Any Democrat wants it can have my pickup truck. And I like my truck. But they can have it because I ain't going to need it no more, Teresa. People say, you're pretty outspoken about the fact you don't like Democrats. I don't like anybody that's for murdering babies. I don't like anybody that's for telling my son that he can have a husband. And that ain't what God said. God said he made Adam, he made Eve, and the ne very next thing out of his mouth was be fruitful and multiply. Did you know two men can't produce fruit? They can't have a baby. You know two women can't produce fruit? They can't have a baby. You know what they want to do? They want to take, take from people from God's plan. They want to adopt their kids. Or they want to have artificial insemination. I don't even know how to say that. Well, what you call that? Insemination. Insemination. I don't need none of that. Amen. You know what they want to do? They want to pervert what God's Word said. And I'm not going to vote for them. I'm not going to support them in any way. I'm going to support people that closely... Hey, and I'm going to tell you, people say, well, you think Donald Trump's perfect foot? If you've listened to him, that man sticks his foot in his mouth 24-7. <laughs> But he is for me having the right to come into church and worship my God. Come on now. He is for us being free and making our own choices and own decisions. And I like being free because I'm thinking to be 57 years old and I've been free my whole life. And I had rather die free than live in bondage. Amen. Come on. I don't know about you. I don't know about our next generation. If a war broke out where we had to go to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, I'm scared to death. I'm glad we got something where we can push a button. Come on. You'd have guys in trenches if you're sending them over there to fight wars. They'd be doing their nails. Things have changed. But you know what didn't change? God's Word didn't change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God didn't change either. He said, I'm the Lord thy God and I change not. So just because society's changing don't mean we change. Because we keep our eyes on the unchangeable one. Oh, y'all got to help me out here this morning. So we need to have a spirit of discernment. Verse 15 said, For the heart of this people have grown dull. Why? They're religious, but they're not spiritual. You know, the Pharisees were religious, 
The Sadducees were religious. I love I love that little thing we tell the kids. It helps them to remember. They were Sadducee because they didn't believe in the resurrection. If you don't believe in the resurrection, that's sad. You can't get out of here without the resurrection. Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection. One of these days, the dead in Christ are going to rise. It's going to take your belief. You've got to have faith in him. First, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Amen? So it said, the heart of this people has grown dull. Y'all ever seen preachers that get up? They're, they're bored to death with the word of God and with church too. They don't preach over 10 minutes. You know why? They don't like it. Now, there's a lot of things I like. I, I, li I like chicken pot pie, pie with ketchup all over it. I like chicken and dressing with all that red stuff smashed down in it. I like a good sweet potato pie. Come on now. How, how many of you know, and, and if you're a Christian, you ought to be enamored with the Word of God. The Word says, come now and see and taste that the Lord is good. He's sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. Man, God's good. Amen. Why am I serving God? I enjoy it. I like it. You know what? If you like something, you're going to be a lot happier doing it. And you're going to do it for a lot longer. Amen? So it says, Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, and I should heal them. The Bible tells us, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. People don't like to get humble today. And pray. A lot of people don't pray too much today. And turn from their wicked ways. They don't want to turn from them either. Then the Lord says, Then I'll hear from heaven. I'll hear the land. Amen? Let's go back. It said, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. How many of you had parents and grandparents told you about the Lord? I thank God for that. You know why? If I hadn't got it when I was young, I might not get it now. Amen? And it says, For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, but they did not see it, and they wanted to hear what you hear, but they did not hear it. <laughs> you know, the disciples, they were seeing, but they weren't understanding. Come on now. We're always on Facebook. I'm always on the hot plate with what I say. And I have had people say, I don't like what you said. Or I take them right back to the Bible and show it to them. Do you know the disciples walked with Jesus every day for three and a half years? They slept next to him. They watched him walk on water. They watched him raise dead people. They watched him heal withered hands. They watched him heal crippled people. They watched him open blinded eyes. Then one of them turns around and looks and says, If you'd just show us the Father, then we'd believe. Everything would be all right with us. Three and a half years. Who do you think raises dead people? Who do you think walks on water? I don't walk on water. If I step on water, I go down faster than you will. I'm bigger than you. Of course, I do float quicker too because fat floats. Amen? But you know what? If they didn't recognize who he was by then, Jesus was telling them. That the young rich ruler we talked about the other day, he said, Good master, what must I do to be saved? Jesus said, Why you call me good? Ain't but one good. That's God. Jesus wasn't saying he was, wasn't good. How many of you know you're good if you walk around raising dead folks and healing sick people and opening blinded eyes and he healing paralytics and healing lepers? You're a good person. You know what Jesus was telling him? He wasn't saying I ain't good. He was saying I'm God. We refer to him every year at Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us. Come on. Oh, Lord. A lot of people don't like it right there, but it's true. I can show you in red where Jesus said, I and the Father are O-N-E. One. When you get to heaven, you're going to see a light that's so blinding that you can't even stand before it. Your knees are going to buckle. There's going to be a figure that's going to walk out of it that you can touch. It's tangible to you. And you can put your arm around. It said he'll walk with you. And it says you will be his people and he will be your what? Your God. And that figure is Jesus Christ. If you're in the church of God, if you don't believe what I'm telling you, you need to go back and look at our bylaws, what we say we believe. We believe. <laughs> when you join something, how many of you know you ought to pay attention to what they say? We believe. Because when you join up with them, you say you believe in it too. We believe in one God eternally existing in three persons. Namely the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
People say, I don't understand that concept. How can there be three? You just said there's one. You can drink water. You can freeze it and you can chew it. You can put it under pressure and turn it into steam and it floats. But every bit of it is H2O. Three different things. One component. Amen? Let's go back. Oh, we're fixing to get into some good stuff here now. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go back. Now, Jesus is about to explain it to them. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. Who's the wicked one? The devil? How many of you in here has already lost your mustard seed that was given to you? Come on, be honest with me this morning. How many of you have already dropped and lost it? Raise your hands high. we got one back there. Who else? Two. Come on. If you lost it, three. Anybody else in here? Look at here. We ain't even got through church yet, and they lost a mustard seed. Do you know people lose their faith that fast? I've had people, I've preached my brains out for an hour and a half, sweat rolled down my back and run through my underwear band. And you know what they say? Man, that was a great message. I said, what did I preach on? I, I don't know, but she was excited about it. <laughs> I get excited at an Alabama football game. I did not get excited when my coach retired the other day. But you know what? I believe God's got the future in his hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but it says, if you don't understand and you don't get a firm grasp on it, the wicked one comes and takes away, snatches away what was sown in your heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. But he who receives seed on the stony place, this is he who hears the word immediately, receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. These are three B Christians. Y'all know what three B Christians are. They blow in, they blow up, and they blow out. Oh, we done found our church, boy. We love these people. We love the fellowship. We love your preaching, Pastor. Where are they at? Gone. What happened? Seed fell on stony ground. Oh, Lord, they only endured for a while, and then they blew in, they blew up, and they blew out. For when tribulation or persecution arises, did it say if tribulation or troubles come? What did it say? When. Come on. In this world, the Bible says you will have tribulation. You will have trouble. So if you think you're going to get saved and troubles, y'all have seen them people get saved and say, oh, everything's going to be fine now, man. I got saved. I ain't going to have no more pro hell for to break loose. You are the most hated people on the planet. We got somewhere between 8 and 9 billion people on planet Earth. They claim 2 billion of them Christians. How many of you know all around the globe everything that claims they are something? The Pharisees claimed that they knew him, but Jesus called them vipers and hypocrites. The Sadducees claimed that they knew him, but they didn't know him because they didn't believe in the resurrection that was taught. So if you don't believe in the resurrection, you ain't going to heaven. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees were eliminated. Do you know how many Jewish people are going to be saved in the end? 144,000. There's been billions of them over the last few thousand years. Do you know why they're not saved? Why they're not going to be saved? They didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus said, I'm the door to the sheepfold. Any man that tries to come any other way is the same as a thief and a robber. I am the door. You can't get there without him. Amen? Let's go back. It said, they only endure for a while when tribulation and persecution arise because of the word. Immediately, they stumble. You start preaching on shacking up, and you got folks sitting there that ain't married, but they're living in the same house having sex. They're fornicators. Guess what? It's going to stomp all over their toes, walk up their shins to their kneecaps. If you're the preacher that's preaching it, they're not going to like you. Why? You delivered the mail. If you run up a $20,000 credit card bill and the postman comes by and drops it in your mailbox, don't shoot the postman. You did that. Amen, Pastor. I needed to hear it right then. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let's go back. 
And it says, Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of the world and the deceitful of richness choke out the word and he becomes unfruitful. Can I tell y'all something about fruit? See, we all like fruit, right? Now, now do you know what you got to do to get fruit? First, you got to buy a piece of land, right? Then you got to have workers in the vineyard. You are the Lord's worker in his vineyard and the world. This is the field that we work in. Do you know what a good farmer does? He's going to go in there. He's going to get up all the stumps and cut out everything that's in the way. He's going to get all the stones out of the way. He's going to row the ground up and prepare the soil. Then he's going to fertilize it. And you know what he does then? He sows the seed. And after all of that, we hope for rain. We hope for water. Come on. A lot of things have to take place for that fruit to come at the harvest. How many of you like a harvest? When you do something, you want the fruit. You want to see good things come out of it. Amen? Amen. Hey, do you know what, what, the, what the harvest consists of? If you want a harvest and you want fruit, there's something at the heart of the fruit. It's a seed. So if you don't put down no seed, you don't get no fruit. You say, well, I, I don't know if I understand what these preach. If you don't understand what I'm preaching this morning, we got problems. The Lord wants us to understand it. He said, unless you accept the kingdom of God as a little, a little child, you'll by no means enter into it. You know what you can do with a little kid? He can get out of line. He can do something horrible. <laughs> you can pick him up and you can tear his tail up. And in 15 minutes, you know what he's doing? He's crawling all over your lap and all up your shoulder and around your head and everything. He wants to play with you and love on you. He'll even kiss you on the jaw. Why? Boy, grown-ups ain't like that. They'll hate you for the next 40 years if you say I something out of line. <laughs> if you don't love your brother, how can you say you love God? I'm giving you something that's going to make you fruitful this morning. If you want a harvest, you've got to prepare your field. Once you prepare the field, then you've got to have the water. You know what the water is? That's the Holy Spirit that gives you discernment. He says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. It takes a lot of ingredients to make you fruitful as a child of God. Amen? Now that mustard seed. Oh, Lord, let's look at, let's skip down, let's look at that. Verse 31. Another parable he put forward to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Now, what did the Bible say about it? That, that little seed, some, it ain't as big as a grain of sand. Hold your little mustard seed up. You can hold it between your two fingers. You know what? You probably pop it in your mouth, swallow it. You wouldn't even know you swallowed the thing. It's so little. But the Bible says it can grow to be one of the biggest trees and said the birds can make nests in there and everything takes shade under. When you first got saved, your faith was small. Come on now. That's the reason the Lord would ask them, do you believe I can do this thing that you're asking me to do or according to your faith, so be it to you. Man, now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And you know what the man said? <laughs> he needed a miracle. Anybody in here ever had a point? You needed a miracle in your life. And the Lord said, do you believe? And he said, I believe. <laughs> but then he thought about it and he said, help thou my unbelief. You know what he was saying? I got faith, but it's little bitty like that mustard seed. How many of you, when you first got saved, you had small faith? After you done served God 15, 20, 30, 40 years, guess what? Faith starts growing. I never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I ain't never had a bill God didn't help me pay. Ever need, ever had, he met it. I ain't telling you he gave me ever want because some of them things I wanted would have gotten me in trouble. Come on. Garth Brooks sings, Sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Remember when you're talking to the man upstairs. Just because he may not answer, and he doesn't mean he don't care. Some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. How many of you pray some stupid stuff in your life? 
<laughs> God, give me this. Give me that one over there, Lord. Give me this car. <laughs> How many of you know, I knew a young man, I ain't going to call his name because some people back from where I came from would recognize this family and I wouldn't want to hurt them for anything. But there's a young fella, he grew up and every year as he got closer and closer to graduation, he told his daddy, he said, I want a Dodge Viper. I want a Dodge Viper. I want a Dodge Viper. I want a, his daddy said, son, if you get straight A's all the way through your senior year, I'm going to give you a Dodge Viper. He said, I want it red, daddy. I want it with a sunroof, daddy. And guess what? He made A's all the way through his senior year. Graduation night, his daddy gave him a Dodge Viper. He took a curve doing a hundred and a quarter and he lost control out of it and his friend had a seat belt on and his friend made it out alive but it slung him out the window and tore half side of his head off and as he lay there and his parents are looking at him in the casket how many times do you suppose his daddy looked at him and thought he didn't need a Dodge Viper he didn't need I shouldn't have gave him a Dodge Viper see your father in heaven he knows what you have need of it said cast all your cares on him because he cares for you it said if he can take care of the little sparrows how much more do you mean to God than a little sparrow? But God's only going to give you things that are good for you. Amen? Why, don't, why didn't I get to marry this one or date that one? Because it wasn't no good for you. Come on. But God, every anniversary I have, I say, oh, but God. <laughs> Thank you, God. Yay, God! Because you know what I did? I dated some Christmas women. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, Lord. But God. But God. It's good. Tony back there saying something. I see him agreeing and expounding. Yeah. <laughs> God is good. All the time, church. And all the time, God is good. Y'all better stand up before I get turned loose. It's already 1230. We don't want to go no fun. I said I go. Hey, didn't I tell y'all if you'd listen at me, I'd cut it short this time. How many like that? Just a little bit shorter and a little bit deeper. We can get deep in the Word, make it a little bit shorter. That way, as soon as the Baptists leave the restaurants, the seats are still warm. You can just slide right in. Amen. 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 Sister Marsha Arrington. You can keep them. And anybody that wants some of this fruit up here, you're welcome to come get this fruit after service. I want every piece of it gone, if you will. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, sister. Dismiss us. Heavenly Father, thank you for your service.